chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness, your home for gains and brains. And we have not done one of these in a while now. It is a full workout vlog. An example of an arm day. I say example because this is not exactly what I'm doing on a regular basis. This is a travel workout. I'm pretty tired. I don't really want to be at the gym right now or doing this workout, but that's what you got to do. Part of this entire game is the days that you don't feel like it, and you'll probably have a fair amount of those, especially the older that you get. You just have to go and get it done. There is no amount of demons that you can summon to fight for years and years and years. Well, maybe some of you can, but I don't have that many demons, I suppose. But I've got some questions about my split recently. I am doing upper lower arms. So how that breaks down during the week, I typically will start the week on Monday. That is upper day, Tuesday is lower, rest on Wednesday, upper Thursday, lower Friday, and then the arm day is on Saturday. And I have an entire program available based around this concept, as well as a handful of others for both novices and intermediates. Be sure to check those out down below. Check out the testimonials on my site too. I have been doing that in some form for the past probably year and a half, maybe almost two years to this point, I tend to go back and forth between upper lower arms and just a standard upper lower. I have gotten very good gains doing both, and I would prefer to go to the gym only four days a week. That fifth day, especially on the weekend, it can become a headache in some ways. That said, you do get a little bit less time per session, and that extra day does give you some more leeway to work with, especially for the upper body muscles. I've explained before that the upper and lower terminology, those are essentially placeholders, meaning you don't have to do exclusively upper body muscles on upper day or vice versa. You can sort of plug and play some different body parts depending on the day to even them out more because if you're going to hit every single part of the upper body on just upper day, even if it's only one exercise, that can turn into a good amount of exercises. And if you want to do more than one, that just compounds the problem. So I have been experimenting with doing abs on my lower body day. And I have in the past done biceps on the lower body day too. You can do the same thing with the back. I have in the past done vertical pulling, usually only one exercise on the upper day, then maybe some type of horizontal pull on the lower day. And again, you can mix and match these things. Part of this is experience and seeing what you can best recover from and how it sort of fits into your routine. And if I was to do another type of five-day split, I would probably do something like a push-pull legs upper lower. Not push-pull legs bra, but push-pull legs upper lower, I think is pretty much the closest that you're going to get to the upper lower arms. I have considered going back to a more bro split style simply as an experiment, but I don't really think it's going to be worth it. I don't see any legitimate advantages, only disadvantages really. As you're going to see in this workout, if you push yourself truly hard, and when it comes to the arms, I mean, you can push yourself very, very hard with typical arm isolations. It's really not that fatiguing overall, but it's still going to take some out of you. And then you combine all of the sessions during the week, especially the biggest and heaviest exercises, pushing yourself at high capacity, you're going to need your rest days. And it's not just a matter of pushing yourself hard for the sake of it. You need to keep the parameters of technique buttoned up as well within the context of a progression scheme. So there are three big variables here, not just mindless intensity, not just adding weight at all costs, and not just having picture perfect smooth form, but lifting little baby weights like the Renaissance periodization cells, you have to combine all three of those variables to the best of your ability. Once you can do that, you're going to be making a lot of gains. And something that can help you with all of that is creatine. Here I am using the Tasty Gains creatine gummies, not the conventional powder. As I just mentioned, I am traveling. These gummies are very convenient for this purpose. I was going through the TSA. They check my bags and the alarm goes off. And they run my bag through again, and they're looking at my powder. I brought some protein powder and some taurine powder with me. They say, we have to check this again. 
They end up bringing my entire bag over to that little extra station. You know, when they call you over and have to check your bag in front of you. I wish I was making this up, guys, I swear. I could not believe this. I lost almost 30 minutes, almost missed my flight. And she does this little test and goes, okay, your powder is all right. And I was like, did you think this was cocaine or something? She goes, oh no, we thought this might have been powder that's used in bombs. All of that headache just to bring some supplements through the TSA. These little gummies right here, A-OK. -okay. But these gummies are also nice because I don't have to remember to bring a spoon with me and I don't have to have any water. I don't have to dry scoop it. I can just pop these in my mouth and go. One gram of third-party tested creatine per gummy. These gummies are easy to toss into your gym bag. They're very portable and they're made in the USA in the state of Arizona. So if you want to give these creatine gummies a try, I will drop a link to them at the top of the description box down below. All right, so as you can see, we have the fancy cuff up there. I have not done this exercise, I don't think regularly ever before. I've just been throwing it in recently in the past couple of months or so. So these are unilateral. Now, the benefit of that is you get to work one side at a time, and you may see that you are stronger on one side or the other. The downside of this is that the progression can be very tough. So tricep isolation, any type of isolation exercise in general, it's gonna get pretty slow once you get pretty strong at it. Then take into account the fact that you're doing unilateral. You could be using the same weight for a pretty long time. Okay, so what you're gonna see with pretty much every exercise on this day, I don't go to failure in the sense that I have somebody helping me. People have this conception that failure is like past failure, if you wanna call it that, where somebody starts assisting you with the reps and all that. I'm talking about absolute failure in a lot of these cases where I cannot do another rep if I tried. You just saw in the clips there, I got to the final rep and I was pushing, but I could not get there. Even if I had cheated, maybe I could have got those reps, but it would have been very significant. So when it comes to isolations, especially with machines and the arms, you can basically take these to absolute failure and you have no real risk of over fatiguing yourself, let alone injury. I mean, keep your fingers crossed, anything can happen, right? But very minimal in terms of this. now. We talk about heavier stuff, especially free weights. That's an entirely different beast. But when it comes to these type of exercises, you can really push yourself balls to the wall. And there's not any legitimate downsides. I mean, if anything, maybe keep one rep in reserve. And a lot of you guys have to get better at judging that. That's one of, I'd say, the biggest hurdles a lot of guys have going from novice to intermediate they'll be like, oh, I thought I was close to failure, but they're not. And they just have trouble in general gauging these type of variables on their own. And once you can master that, I mean, I can watch somebody train. I can judge this for myself. I can basically predict with high, high degrees of certainty if somebody's going to fail the next rep. And if you are not good at that yet, it just takes time.
All right, now we're going into biceps and we have the dumbbell curl. Now, you might not be able to fully see this, but I am on a preacher curl machine, actually. We're not gonna do the machine though. I'm simply using the support to rest the back of my arms against. That's going to prevent any swaying. This is why you gotta record your sets, by the way, guys. I was going back looking at some curl footage. Also the same thing for tricep press downs too. If my back is not against something, I have a very bad habit of starting to sway back and forth and I can start to like arch and use too much momentum. And in the moment, because everybody says like, oh, I make sure my form is good and all that. Everybody talks about that, but in the moment, it's very easy to lose that and not even realize that you're doing it, especially when you're so focused on the mind-muscle connection and just pushing yourself and all that stuff, right? So that's another thing. Even if you're very experienced, we can all fall into bad habits. I'm not immune. So make sure you record your form. Guys, it's not hard. I am using a cheap tripod right now. That's what my camera is propped up on to record this. You can get one for your phone as well. These things are like $20. I'll link one down below. Buy one, okay? All these excuses guys have, oh, it's weird to film yourself in the gym. Guys, I'm in this gym right now talking to myself. I look like a total psycho. People are looking at me. Just recording your own form, that's like standard issue now. Okay, stop making excuses not to do it. But this curl is going to include a supination. So go down and more of a neutral or hammer grip, and then curl up with the supinated hand. That's going to, theoretically at least, hit the bicep more fully than a standard curl where you keep the hand fully supinated the entire time. Quick music check here. Check out my metal playlist. It's on my community tab. Might have to scroll down a little bit, but can this focus? Okay. Creed. All right, guys. Creed was very popular whenever I was very young, and I thought they were just like some soft rock religious Christian type of band. Dude, I was checking out one of their concerts because I guess they got back together. Man, they got some good music. I did not realize how hard they went on some of these songs. I might have to do a metal tier list of the best metal bands to listen to while training. Let me know if you want to see that. Now, one thing about me, I clean everything off before I use it because I have gotten ringworm from a filthy LA shitness in the past. And that can happen at any gym, so now I'm like OCD about cleaning things, but I'd much rather do that than have to try to reach around my back with some ointment. This bar is interesting. I've seen this in some gyms, others I don't. It seems to be really hit or miss, but I do like it. Gotta scoot far enough back so we can clear the bench. Now, in terms of the weight here, whenever I'm traveling, I tend to not do all of the weights I was doing previously, unless it's something simple like dumbbells or a barbell, but especially with machines, different brands, like this little bar here, I don't know what exactly it weighs. I didn't take the time to go stand on the scale, 
because I also didn't weigh myself today. Don't know what that's gonna be. I typically will just pick a weight that I know it's going to be within a range I can do. As long as you get to the intensity point, that's fine. My usual gym does not have one of these bars, these little neutral grip handlebars that I have seen. I'm going to have to look harder for it. But I have done the typical skull crusher with a straight bar or an easy bar. And I will get some elbow stress deeper into the set that I go. And I have not experienced that with this one. So maybe I should buy one of these. It's not very big. Just throw it in my gym bag. You cannot be too prepared out here because you never know when the next new study is going to prove that something is optimal. Okay, so now we used the other preacher curl machine just as arm support. Now we're actually going to do a preacher curl machine. So when it comes to an arm day, I typically recommend two exercises for the triceps, two for the biceps. And if you're going to do that, you would want them to be different in some capacity. This one with the preacher bench, there is really no way to cheat at all. You could sort of cheat a little bit with the curl I did earlier, like you can sort of slouch more and more and sort of start to make an incline. Like I said, if you're taking your sets to a serious point of intensity and your form is buttoned up, you're not going to be able to keep doing, at least with any amount of true effectiveness, more volume, more volume, just set after set after set, or numerous exercises. I mean, I could do two sets of these two exercises, four sets in total. That's it for the entire arm day, and my arms are on fire. And now it's time for shoulders. I know my shoulders are always the topic of heated debate on here. Someone left a comment the other day. It was just emojis. It was a basketball and then like the black hair bearded guy emoji and then another basketball. And it made me feel all tingly inside. But I've told you guys I don't do a ton of volume for my delts. People seem to think that I'm doing some absurd routine or something. And I'm lucky in that department. Genetically, they grow easily for me. I don't even really have to directly do a lot and they'll grow well. That's my luck of the draw. Other people have that for other body parts. What can you really do about that? But I've said before, man, I don't advocate just throwing the kitchen sink at the delts or any other muscle group in hopes of getting it to grow. Check out my latest video. I'll link it in the top corner. It'll be below this video as well the fastest way to improve your weak points because there are some key things you need to consider but overall it's not what most people think Ugh. <sighs> 
You know, I can still see some slight, like, chest, I don't want to say striations, but some lines there. You know, so depending on the angle, I'll look higher body fat than I think I actually am. Or maybe my body dysmorphia is at a point now where it's so bad that, you know, I'm, just, I'm too far in. There's no return. And I've been in this goon lighting for a little bit too long now, and I can see that the camera battery indicator is flashing. So it's time to go. See you soon.